video is sponsored by Surfshark, who make every outfit stylish by sheer virtue of adding a layer of internet privacy. And what could be more fashionable than that? Hello friends and welcome to a very unglamorous at home video uh, with us because Christmas plans keep changing, life, everything. To be honest, I don't feel like we've been at all glamorous this year, but you know, I realize I'm sat here in silk pajamas saying that, so take it with a pinch of salt. Still though, not looking my best. Had plans to do another video today, got hit with the migraines. It's not, it's not fun. Had a fun announcement uh, from Boris, our Prime Minister, about tiers system. We, I don't know how your country's doing it, but in England we've decided to um, split people into different categories, in different areas, which, you know, in no way shows different economic situations around the country. But unfortunately, one of the things that means is that we are now going to be having Christmas alone. Uh, so that's gonna be interesting. We're gonna do something, um, just the two of us, really. We're gonna spend the next two weeks just holed up together in the house by ourselves with the dogs. So we're not really by ourselves because we have the dogs. They are excellent company. Walter has very good chat. Highly recommend. Hello. Be nice. Hello, wife. Last time we had done know. Christmas Day alone, I think it was like two or three years ago, I just ate a whole tray of pigs and blankets. <laughs> so I was like, because I can. Oh. Yeah, that was, my parents were supposed to come that year, but then they both got really, really ill and they couldn't drive. So we were like, oh, okay, uh, I guess we're, we're just alone then. We'll just, we'll just eat leftovers. It was amazing. I mean, I had like crab legs and you had pigs in blankets and we just sat by the TV watching everything we wanted to watch, chatting about the nonsense we wanted to chat about. It was actually pretty great. So this could be the best Christmas ever. take a lot of fashion tips from period dramas because and I am sorry dress historians but I, I actually quite like that they're not exactly accurate all right period dramas tend to take the general idea of the period and then give it a twist to keep with the times in which the program airs and that's pretty fascinating to me it also means that the truly bizarre styles and makeup of the past Tudors and looking at you can be something quite attractive, like every Philippa Gregory-based star series ever. Honestly, no one looked that good in those days. Jodie Comer, I am particularly singling you out in this. I mean, but sadly, there comes a point where you just reach the end of the Netflix period dramas. It's tragic, and you never think it will happen to you, but it does. I know, I know, I wasn't expecting it either. But never fear, it is pretty easy to trick the internet about where you live, and thus gain access to a whole host of other programs, as long as you have Surfshark. Yes, this is the advert part of the video. Surfshark is an app and a browser extension that lets you fool your laptop and phone into thinking that you're somewhere else in the world, allowing you to access content that you can't usually see. Like the original Twilight Zone and Twin Peaks, which is admittedly not where I saw myself starting when looking for period dramas, but here we are. US Netflix tells me I need to watch The West Wing, and I, that feels like a, a big investment, both in terms of time and emotions. So please do let me know in the comments if it's actually worth it, or just one of those things I should pretend I've watched in order to sound cool. And if you don't much care about what sound comes out of the machine, but you know, you just need subtitles to be in a language that you understand, then my Goodness, is there a lot of content out there. If you don't have Surfshark, do you even culture? Also, I just learned that Surfshark works on an Amazon Fire Stick, so you can watch it on an actual TV. And then I thought, wait, can you watch it on other smart TVs? And you can! Surfshark is the only VPN that lets you have one account on an unlimited number of devices. The shock! I should also mention that Surfshark makes your internet safer by masking your IP address, keeping your data private. I mean, like, allegedly, that's why people buy VPNs, but in reality, I think we all know we're buying them just to watch more content. I mean, what even is safety? I have 500 passwords. I should probably do something about that. You can do better. Click the link in the description and use code JESSICA for 84% off Surfshark plus 
four months extra free. They offer a 30 day money back guarantee as well. So go, go, go. Bypass the content throttling, government censorship, and the uncomfortable feeling you're being tracked. You're not paranoid. Your internet provider actually tracks your web history and file downloads. Advertisers track your browsing patterns and search history with cookies. And even those like friendly looking websites record your IP address and data every time you visit. Wow, that you're feeling uncomfortable now. So click the link once you've finished watching. Okay, we finally got around to actually uh, <coughs> writing our Christmas cards. I know, I know, ridiculous. So we're gonna put them into the post box today. Unfortunately, they are probably only first class stamp. We'll get them there before Christmas at this point. Oh well. My parents are really big on Christmas cards and every single year, my father makes like designs this out there interesting Christmas card that has all those layers of depth and hidden meaning and um, and then they send it to all of your friends and family and it always gets posted on like the I don't know the second of December and my mother keeps these really long lists of everyone's address that does it really well. And somehow I always manage to post mine on the 20th of December. Every year I'm like, I'm gonna do second class stamps too. It's gonna be, yeah, I'll do it second class. Definitely, definitely. And then, uh, and then time, time catches me, gets me every year. Where's this year gone? This year has somehow felt like the shortest and also the longest year that has ever been. I, I, I would just like to say though, Let's, let's not be too miserable about 2020. I am glad to see the back of it. I will give it that. I am very pleased to see the back of 2020. But look, I'm sat here by this beautiful Christmas tree in this part of my house that did not exist before 2020, next to my genuinely stunning windows. I don't, I'm quite obsessed with my windows. Hang on. This might be like the most adult thing I've ever done, but. I must show you my windows. Okay, I apologize in advance for this footage not being as good as when Claudia does cutaways. I'm aware, I'm shaky and not brilliant. Yeah, if you've ever wondered, who does those nice like cutaway shots? It's always Claudia. I'm just here to make jokes and look pretty. Ooh, look. What am I even trying to show you with this? I don't know. It's just a window, but it excites me. Let's get a different view. <gasps> Step back. Oh yeah, also balustrading. Don't we love it? My mother said it looks like a Sims house. And you know what? I'm not even gonna take that as an insult. It does. Ooh, doors. Ah. Oh, and the tripod you were just on. These, by the way, are called marginal bars. These bits, when you have bars going around the outside, like this. We did originally think that we wanted the kind of early Georgian windows, which you've probably seen a lot of. They're the ones that are... Wait, I'm going to stop moving so that you can just look at something. So the Georgian bars, you kind of see the lots of uh, bars type thing. Wow, you can see... Okay, the garden doesn't look great. Let's go look at the other window again. Here we are, the other window. How nice. Oh, more Christmassy and everything. So yes, we did think originally that we wanted the early Georgian, which is where there'd be sort of a bar across here, and then it would be split into th into six or eight windows, or possibly even more. Um, and that was originally because they couldn't make glass large enough. However, by the late Georgian period, they were able to make glass large enough for this center frame panel here. Um, and we decided that actually we quite liked the marginal bars idea because you can see a lot more than, you know, if you've got a lot of bars. And Claudia didn't want to feel like she was trapped. There's a lot of that. Um, I actually might do some baking as well, feeling a bit of a baking day, but generally gonna be trying quite like delicate with myself. All of yesterday, and I still kind of have, I guess the aftershocks of one, because it's not a full blown migraine today. Um, yes, we'll see. Today is also a fun chance for those of you on mouthwatch, because that's what I've decided we're calling it, um, to see how my my mouth is progressing post Botox. How are we feeling? How we look? How what are we thinking? Sorry, I know I keep staring at the viewfinder just to see if it looks different. Does it, does it look different? 
does it. I am, I'm not consciously trying to talk out of the left side of my mouth. Quite often in videos when I'd be filming, I would very, have to like try and remind myself and make the conscious note to try and speak forwards or to speak, to use the left side and then that would sort of cancel out and then speak forwards. But no, I'm just gonna, I'm just very naturally letting it happen letting my speech move. For those of you who missed the video in which I'm explaining why the hell my mouth is changing, uh, click the link in the just card thing that is here. Um, the, the long and short of it is, I got Botox in my jaw because I had a hypertropic... Uh, the, the letter somewhere. Um, I got a, I had a hypertropic. My muscle had cramped. I had a, I had a cramping jaw muscle, which meant that uh, the other side had become far too weak and was dislocating a lot, um, and also had just kind of stopped working. Just given up the ghost, really. I was like, no, 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 right side, you take this. Absolutely fine, you go right ahead. Don't worry about me. So the right side was doing all of the work, eating my food, talking, kissing my wife, and the left side was getting none of it. The left side was upset. It's not what we like, we like equality in this household, um, especially uh, of the face, so facial equality. That's what we're aiming for in 2021. Okay, now I'm gonna really put, quickly put my makeup on uh, before we go out to meet some friends to walk in the rain. While I'm putting makeup on, I just like makeup, all right, sometimes. Also, you should always wear some kind of SPF on your face, even if you're just chilling around indoors. I recently got oh, a makeup case. It's the best thing ever. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description in case you want one just like mine. Because I'll be honest, it took me a really long time to find one that was not black. So, ooh, that really threw off the light balance there, didn't it? So if you too are searching for a non-black but massive makeup case, uh, this is this is the one for you, highly recommend. It wasn't even that expensive. You know, I was prepared. I was like, okay, this is gonna take a chunk out of my monthly budget. Um, but it, it, it wasn't even that bad. I went to that, I don't know why I thought it would be like 300 pounds. Like my budget's 300 pounds. Right. Ooh, look, it opens. Ooh. <laughs> so prior to this, um, I was keeping my makeup in a drawer, but it didn't all fit in the drawer, so I couldn't close the drawer. So I just took the drawer out of the chest of drawers and carried the drawer and its overflowing makeup contents around with me to places. The genius I am who refuses to buy things. Like, it's fine. This vaguely fulfills its purpose. It doesn't need anything else. Oh, so the first thing I'm going to put on my face this morning, look at me, I'm like a, a makeup vlogger or something. Um, lifestyle, are you called lifestyle now? I'm a lifestyle. I think it's so funny when people um, say that about me. Jessica's a lifestyle YouTuber. Is she? What lifestyle is that? Pray tell. The lifestyle of migraines. I mean, it's a lifestyle. Just, you know, like how we can all sing, we just can't all sing well. Oh yeah, okay, let's go. Vitamin enriched face base. Don't worry, I've already put on my SPF this morning because I uh, did not sleep very well and woke up at 6 a.m. and I was like, well, I'm awake, what am I gonna do? I know, I'll exfoliate my face and put baby suntan cream on. Yeah, that's what I do, 6 a.m. I have to use baby suntan lotion because it doesn't have zinc in it and I have an unfortunate slight allergy to zinc. The most unfortunate part is not that most suntan lotions include zinc and not just suntan lotions, makeup. This has probably got zinc in, she says, as she puts it on her face. All right, it doesn't. That's why my face kind of just gets quite red sometimes. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh man, zinc is in everything. But the worst thing is seafood. Tragic, it's absolutely tragic. I love crab. It's one of my absolute favorite things to eat. But then I get all tingly and itchy and uh, <laughs> my hands are like, ah. I know it itches so much. And my mouth is a little itchy and my throat kind of closes a little bit and I'm like <coughs> All right, then what we're gonna do, we're gonna just pass on a teeny tiny little bit of this Too Faced Concealer in snow. I don't think we are. That colour doesn't look quite right. Yay, she looks like she slept. Delightful. Okay. This um, gift, this is the brush set that I had in my gift set video. And this big brush is my new absolute favorite thing. It is delightful. 
It feels so good on my face. I mean, clearly I'm not fine. But, you know, everything else is fine. This is my blusher brush, but I'm not bothered to dip it in any more blusher. I'm just using the old blusher that's already on it because, uh, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. My brain feels like, if you've ever been extremely dehydrated, that's how my brain feels like right now. But that's kind of hilarious because how could it be dehydrated? There is no actual way for my brain to be dehydrated. I drink <laughs> gallons of water a day. You know, like, oh, you should drink eight glasses of water a day. I'm like, hmm, well, I'm drinking eight litres and I still feel dehydrated. So, uh, any suggestions? I used to try and obsessively suck uh, mints for a while, see if that helped. I mean, it made my breath like, I'm in different. Uh, but it didn't actually help my rabid thirst, unfortunately. Okay, I'm ready. Let's go on a socially distant spell walk. What are you doing? You look so cute. Hey. <laughs> this is Tilly's new favourite chair. She's she staring does. at mummy. She's very intensely staring at you. <laughs> You're my favourite. Mm. Jessie's been very jealous recently because she bought Tilly basically because she was like, I want a dog that loves me and follows me around as much as Walter follows you around. I was like, okay. And then like, what, for the first like year and a half she did. And now she sleeps on my lap and follows me everywhere. And Jessie's like, we need to get a third dog. <laughs> what did I do wrong? <laughs> and what do we have here? Oh. <laughs> Tilly, uh -huh. why is it? She's like, you stole my space, mommy. <laughs> this is not okay. I'm gonna sit on this tiny bit of cushion on your head. <laughs> Tilly's very She's looking at sitting on my hair. She's looking at you like, hmm. I would, I would actually just like to point out, Matilda, that I was here first, and oh, oh, my hair. Oh, <sighs> my girls. <laughs> so last video, what was our last video about? Shakespearean swear words. Oh yeah, that was a really random thing. Shakespearean, <laughs> slang, sh Shakespearean swear words. Um, apparently the most insulting thing you can say if you're from Shakespeare time is you're an egg. According to Twitter. Okay, according to Twitter. Anyway, we mentioned how I bought a blossom tree and an apple tree for the garden. I bought a like a cans and cherry blossom tree. I don't know why it's called a cherry blossom tree because I don't think it actually produces cherries. So if anyone knows, we had this debate last time, why it's called a cherry blossom tree, then please let us know. I could probably look it up, but you know, anyway. Anyway, we had this man come and dig some holes because I was like, actually, that's quite a lot of effort. I thought I'd really enjoy digging the holes, but it's winter and I'm like, eh, I don't really want to dig some muddy holes. So um, we got one of the builders to do it. He didn't have the best English. I wasn't here to supervise. I left Jessica in charge, which was probably a mistake. And um, when I came home the two trees the cherry tree and the apple tree were basically buried really deep like that much of the trunk of the tree was actually under the ground <laughs> i was like what the hell happened here so anyway i've spent the day uh, rectifying the situation making a little dike which is what is it darling we had a debate about this what's a dike i think a dike is the raised part you think a dike is the dip i think it's the dip like a i think it's like to describe a like a, a valley like area that water has created through passing through like almost like a glacier and Jessica thinks it's the bits that actually are the mounds beside it maybe it's the whole thing who knows but anyway I had to create this like circular mound it basically looks like a bird's nest with the tree coming out of the middle and that's to prevent uh, weeds and things growing to not compete with the new tree um, and that bit was like actually the best, most fun bit. It really felt really like professional, putting on my mulch and then making it look like a bird nest. But anyway, I will show you what I did in case you're interested. Walter doesn't like coming out into the cold. He's gonna stay inside like a wise old man. So here is the uh, blossom tree. It's pretty tall actually. I was quite impressed. I think it's about four years old. And this is what I had to, what I mean about the, um, building the dike which is all this mound and mulchy stuff um which is basically like hay um and it stops all the weeds and it looks kind of pretty it smells quite nice it smells like the farm so hopefully by springtime next year this will be filled with beautiful um pink blossoms and down here we've got the two apple trees so this is the one i planted today um after digging up the rose bush that was 
randomly planted, even though it was already a potted plant. We don't really know what happened there. And over there is the other apple tree. That one is a Spartan apple tree, which has a very deep red coloured apple that Jessica really loved. And this one is a sunset um, something or other, which I think is a type of like cox. But the reason I bought these two is they're meant to recruit, um, produce nice tasting fruit, have pretty blossom, they're not too big, um, and they most importantly pollinate at the same time, which is really important if you actually want to have some fruit off your trees. So you need to check things like that, like do they both blossom and pollinate in the same sort of time of year um, in order for you to uh, fertilise the trees, for the trees to get fertilised or pollinate or whatever the word is, and produce fruit. So I'm excited to see them grow in the next coming years. And for anyone who wanted an update, that's how far our roof has got so far. So uh, I mean it's still not tiled, it has a roof, it doesn't have a window, still got a scaffolding. But you know, we're getting there, we're getting Oh, and here's the slightly sad looking rose that was um, rather unkindly and unexpectedly ripped from its pot, planted in the soil, and then I had to dig it up and replant it. So um, let's wish it some luck. Hello. So uh, Tilly's just making herself feel at home on her secondary seat, which is Me. Mummy Jessie. <laughs> who's often piled in a heap, but with lots and lots of nice padded Hello. petticoats. Isn't that right, Tilly? Earlier she was sat on my leg, and now she has got her muddy footprints all over my nice white tights. I just got these ones. They're very hard to come by, white tights, Matilda, in adult sizes anyway. <laughs> Probably not looking uh, the most most attractive no, I was right going to say, this is not the best angle, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is the up I look wide, but also I have a small head. Yeah, that's why, you know, like when you see statues on top of buildings, they deliberately make the head bigger uh, proportionally, because when you look up, then it looks in proportion. So right now, really, you need to have a bigger head. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> or tilt your camera. See, isn't that better? Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. You can just hold it there, can't you? No. <laughs> video went differently to how I expected. <laughs> um, unfortunately, that migraine, just it just kept on running. It just kept going. It ended up being a five day thing. Not, not great, not great at all. I was trying to work out why on earth it was happening and we figured that it could either be because I've started taking daily migraine preventative medication also, obviously, I just got Botox, which perhaps could have made the other side of my face kind of pull in a funny way. It's obviously working more than it's ever worked before, uh, which this is why I'm doing a new hair look. Thoughts in the comments, please. Um, I've never actually, this is going to sound silly, but because my face has been so asymmetric, I have always done uh, a very, a very extreme side parting because the, I hoped that would hide my deeply asymmetrical face. Um, and now the hope is that since my face will become more symmetrical, maybe my hair can be. It's a thing. I'm trying it. Claudia says she likes it. Mm. Yesterday's uh, vlogging happened, finished quite abruptly, didn't it? I think it was the day before. <laughs> So yes, my point was, migraine lasted a while. It was either because I'd taken that new medication. No, I've because had I got Botox in my face. No, I've had, I've had her look and it said side effects. It doesn't include headaches. It's meant to prevent headaches. All right, we'll knock that one out. I think uh, you had your period. Oh, you period. You had Botox in your face that she said was gonna make you feel really quite run down. She did say that, yeah. And you're getting stressed about like- The building work. COVID. Also, I, also I walked around 
carrying a dog for a while. <sighs> and I may have just got a crick in my neck. Yeah. And also, I was looking up about- He's getting chubs, okay? Was, was, He's getting chubs. I was looking up about Bichons, because I was like, I don't know, we were watching a program called like 12 Puppies in Us about families, like getting different types of breeds of dogs and how they- puppy, How different people How different way, Yeah, how people raise their puppy. I then started looking up, what will our next puppy be? It's all right, also, calm down. And, um, and then I was like, oh, maybe a, a Cavachon. I was like, it has to be a Bichon mix. Because they're like so, they're so nice, they've got such a good temperament, they're mm -hmm. so calm mm -hmm. and relaxed. He doesn't bark unless it's a fox no. or a seagull. But like he doesn't bark, you know, he's so friendly. Like literally he'll go up to anyone in the park and be like, hello. You can rob our house and Walter would be like, how can I help you? We have builders coming through this Do you door. need me to tell you where the television is? It's in here. He's like deaf. The builders come through that door. He had no idea they were coming and he's just like, hello. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you're not very Are good guard dog. friend? But anyway, I quite like the fact that he's not a good guard dog because he's nice and calm. Um, but he's a good hearing dog. He does come and get you. He's delightful. Yes. When There's Marshall's an not really, issue. it's not really anymore because he's deaf. But you know, he was a really good hearing dog. Anyway, my point was he was a great hearing dog when he could hear. My point was, after looking at all these different types of mixed breeds, I decided actually I'll just get another Bichon. Yes, and then she looked up the statistics and, of Bichons. Yeah, and then I looked up the traits of Bichons, <laughs> and one was very upsetting because it says the average life of a Bichon. Cover your ears. It was like 12 to 15 years, and he's 13 already. It's okay, baby, baby. Oh, no, darling. Oh. She actually started to come. Okay, well, she's like, don't do it. Anyway, he's like, don't touch me. Also, the other the other trait I looked up, which was quite hilarious, which is the point of my story. Oh, I'm getting like you, darling. Very convoluted <laughs> stories. Is that they should weigh between? I think this was totally wrong, but it said it should. They should weigh between like three and five kilos for a bichon freeze. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, our trunky monkey weighs ten. Oh. So um, I mean, and then Jessica said he was a runt. Which I thought was like the opposite of a big chunky yeah, monkey. Yeah, I know, I know. The lady uh, who I bought Walter from told me that he was the runt of the litter and I was therefore getting him cheaper than the other dogs. Maybe he's not pure bichon. <laughs> Um, but yeah, maybe he just has like a, an issue where his growth is No, too... I've definitely seen other Bichons in the park and they are like, not as big as him, but they are like <laughs> getting close. But every time we take him to the vet, the vet says, he's not starving. So, <laughs> oh. and you know you overfeed the he dogs. He just loves his food. You know you overfeed him. I do, I do. That she will sometimes set aside food for Walter before she's even served the humans. I do that all the time, yeah. <laughs> Especially if it's like- She'll be like chopping up a chicken for us to eat. And as she chops, she'll be like, mm. A nice bit. I'll yeah, just put that well, no, on the plate, they're, ready they're for nice Walter. Bits. They're nice bits for oh, dogs. But there you go. It's a bit Walter they're will like enjoy. The fatty bits. There so we like... are. He'll like that. He's my best friend. <laughs> so we like we put the food under Walter's face and have Tilly be like two meters away and make them both wait and then go okay. And in the time it takes Walter just to lower his, his head, head down, already basically he's already room. Yeah. In. She's very dominating of him. I mean, he might be a big boy, but like, you know, she bosses him about. He's not fair, is it, Walter, in this woman dominated house? I know. I mean, that's why he feels a, a closer affinity to me because I'm not as. Bad. As fem. I'm not as fem as you and Tilly. I mean, I'm just sat here dressed as Mother Christmas for no reason, by the way. Christmas lady. Christmas lady, sorry. Did we already do that this week? Yeah, Mother Christmas is fine. Okay, Mother Christmas Mother is Mother Christmas. Christmas lady, but you can't be like, what's her name? She's she does. For Santa's wife has a name. No, Mary. Where is she? But that's a different story. Mary Christmas. Mary. <laughs> I think they. I think she's just called Mrs. Claus. I don't think canonically there is. What do you think Mrs. Claus's name would be? Mary. Mary. But then why would she be called Mary Claus? Because she's not Because her name is not Christmas, is it? Yes, it is. He's not Father one. Christmas. And what's your most favourite Christmas sort of movie or programme to watch? Um, well, High Society came on this morning on TV yeah. and I was very excited. I don't think I've seen Does it. Does not relate to Christmas. But well, it's a bit like Singing in wonderful. the Rain. They play that every year at Christmas and that doesn't relate to Christmas. Should be Singing in the Snow. Mm. You know what's a good one? Guys and Dolls has it's, a Christmas. It's a Wonderful Life. Excellent. Oh, that's so sweet. Of course, excellent. I actually really love Um, I'm a big okay, fan well, of Christmas. I'm not allowed, in my opinion. <laughs> Carry on. Liam, please continue. Don't get hysterical again. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> I really like um, The Snowman. I just, 
It's so magical. I think I watched it when I was little and they play it every, luckily, it's very, obviously lots of people think this because they play it every year, don't they, on Christmas yeah. Day at about 1.30, I think it's like before the Queen's speech sort of time, um, which is actually quite a bad time because it's usually when we're eating. So I sometimes miss it and then I'm like, I miss the snowman. And then, and then it's like, you can watch she your hands that face. <laughs> I mean, I would sing it, but like. She's 32, but. Still. I'm 33, darling. I had my birthday at the beginning of well, the Well, you've not yet done that thing with the snowman because we've not had Christmas yet. Well, maybe about I'm, last maybe Christmas I'm over that When now. you were 32. Maybe you're last oh, 32 wow. I about it. You've matured so much. I'm 33 now, I'm like, you know, I'll get upset, but I'm like, oh, I missed it, what a shame. But I'm not gonna miss it because I'm also very organized as an adult now and I'm gonna set a timer. We've just got TiVo. It's not the same, gotta watch it whilst the whole nation is watching. And I like how there's no uh, words. I like a lot of things that have no um, speech. No speech, because they're like globally accessible. Well, the actual thing is actually a story without any words. It is. It's literally just like a comic book kind of strip story Indeed. style. Anyway, that's my favorite thing at Christmas. <laughs> now you go ahead, talk about your thing. <laughs> I like the film White Christmas. It's I don't think I've seen that either. What? Maybe I have, I don't know who's you, Oh my God, who's you have it? to watch White Bing Christmas. Crosby. Oh, I was right, Bing Crosby! See, you look at me. You were right, but also, you've definitely seen this. Oh yeah, I have. Is it like when they do some weird, like, little musical numbers halfway through? Well, we watch High Society well, tonight, and on Christmas Day yes. we watch The Snowman. Yes! Oh, there's that new Roald Dahl, Beatrix Potter. There is! <laughs> Roald and Beatrix, the tale of the curious mouse. Spelled T-A-I-L, just to confuse us all. Yes, just to confuse the people who write Instagram posts about it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, really interestingly, I had no idea that Roald Dahl uh, so enjoyed Beatrix Potter's books. He met her uh, was a as massive a little boy. Yeah, so the, the movie is about how he goes to meet her because she's been a big source of inspiration yeah. and help for him because he's dealing with his grief over his father and his sister having died. Well, we won't give away too much. I mean, that's not giving anything away. Okay, good. That's uh, factual, historical. I mean, I didn't know those facts. Oh. I would have enjoyed that part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's ruined. Now well, you yeah. know. Well, to keep sniffing under the tree because... <gasps> yes, oh my God, I've just realized this is gonna be our last video due to my five day long migraine. This will now be our last video before the live stream on Christmas day. <gasps> Christmas is coming. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm not allowed this Christmas excitement. Oh, yeah. I can't just sit here randomly dressed like Merry Christmas anyway. in front of my Christmas tree while you sit in a blue jumper in front of a door. <laughs> yeah. I just say the screen. It pretty like, much sums up our lives. The screen right it's here. Just, like, surrounded by twinkly lights and glamour and people's eyes are just drawn to her. And then who's that like random like side trick she has? <laughs> She should just leave. Let's go out this door. Anyway, I think that is our time to go. I hope you enjoyed our <laughs> vlog slash random ramble slash educating you about Bichons. <laughs> <laughs> and how our one is possibly not a Bichon. I love him. <laughs> hey, if he's not a Bichon, he might live forever. Yes, that's hard. Jessica works. keeps telling me that he's going to live to at least 19 he years. He will. Old. All right. Ollie, don't want to know what we will, will happen if he catch up with you all on Christmas Day. Live. Yes, my God. We will actually see you live. Well, that's the yes. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> we'll read your comments live. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we'll see you with our live stream on Christmas Day. And then the first video after that will be the first video of the new year. We're going to be talking about some big projects that we've got coming up in 2021. Um, very, very exciting. Lots of stuff been going on behind the scenes. Very dying to tell you all about it. You will find out. 2021. 2021. The year of new beginnings. New projects, new plans. New stuff happening. Yes. New, new, new. New, 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 new. <laughs> All right, anyway. I don't know what she's been drinking other than like Coke, like Christ. <laughs> and please stay safe. Wear a mask. Use alcohol gel on your hands. What's that? What's that little government thing they use? Um... Hands, face, space. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Remember, click the link in the description and use the code Jessica for 84% off Surfshark plus four months extra free.